My name is Carlo Ferro. I am presenting talks in the small talks since the very beginning. Thanks to FAST for organizing this wonderful conference every year. Also, they have warned that we should not take it for granted. This year, we have noticed the lack of external help and FAST people is multiplying themselves to to cover all areas. Uh, my talk is about a small project, a pet project really, that I have done in during weekends, and it's about words. Um, as it says here, my love for books drove me into a lot of wonderful places. I think you all can recognize <clears throat> the references here, but this is a part of my influences and readings. But finally, it drove me into review and edition of text. I work with a friend of mine, Diego Furbato, who has uh, several published books and I have reviewed them all. Uh, and, oh, sorry, there is this remark. And besides uh, reviewing his work and his text, we talk a lot about the process of writing and he uh, he gives some workshops about writing and once he told me something that remained here bounding in my mind and it was that he always repeated the same advice in the workshops, because it's very frequent in uh, newbies, when they start writing, they often use a lot of adverbs ending in mente in Spanish, which is equivalent to the lie in English. And that in Spanish is uh, like a sin in the writing because it's um, a suffix that uh, it's like uh, with the repetition it gets uh, the reader bored quickly because uh, it's uh, eternamente, largamente. If you repeat that ending of the word several times uh, it loses all effect and it reveals that you are not working enough to look for synonyms. But that drove me into thinking that it's not the only case of uh, fatigue in the hearing of the reader. Well, I, I, I have here some part of what the review and edition work is. It's mainly on the eyes because we work with written text and it, it's like this, taking the Word document and marking, marking lots of things, making remarks and replacing words all kinds of edition notes that after that the author reviews and approves or rejects. This is another sample of text. Uh, unfortunately, all the samples are in Spanish because most of my reviews are in Spanish. And now we change the bit. Now I just mark with uh, a red pen and send pictures of the ruined pages for him to pass the the corrections into the text. But working in this way with the written text, it's very hard to detect 
the repetitions of words that are so tiresome for readers. You can notice in this small paragraph, you have a lot of repetitions of the word word, but here they are marked in, with a different color and you can see them. Reading the text is very hard to detect that is happening. You will need to read it aloud to notice and uh, well, nobody reads aloud hundreds of pages for review. So that made me think in building a little tool to detect that. And I did it all wrong because being my own client, I can do it bad because I am paying for it with, with my time in this case. Don't try this in your ha at home. It's a bad way of writing software, even for the smallest projects. But I started with the GUI because I, I knew how I would like to work with the text. And this is the way, having a, a table with word repetitions. And I would like to see how often they appear and how far the repetitions are. And this is what the table shows. The key, which is the word in, in principle, the positions in the text where it appears, the separation between those positions in the increments column, how many times it appears in the block of text analyzed, and the, this metric is very interesting for me, the minimum separation between repetitions. After that is the main block where the text is, and I remark with red the analyzed word and its repetitions. I have a small navigation pane where you can go from one repetition to the next or the previous one. It says the which repetition is, in this case, the third of eight. Uh, how, uh, how many words are before, how many words are after, before the next repetition. I have this uh, repetition type, which can be full words, or as I have started with that, I can also get suffixes or prefixes to analyze the repetition. That is what I use for the mente ending in the adverbs. Ah, well, finally, I have an option to open a, a document to analyze. And this is a, a little toy because uh, for, for words or suffixes or prefixes, I took five letters as the minimum because uh, articles in Spanish and also in English are very short and have no interest for this because they are naturally repeated everywhere and I would not like to analyze that because that is the reader is used to ignore the repetition of articles. Well, the project, as I have said, is very small. It has a very small model, but it's uh, amazing how when you start writing a diagram, all kinds of objects appear. So it's centered in the document. The document has a, a list of words, which are associations between the word itself and a stretch. A stretch is like a range. It has a start and an end. 
and it has a dictionary of the repeated words saying the word as key and the index is always word indexes where it appears same for prefixes same for suffixes i have an option for uh, keeping the stretches for paragraphs uh, the raw text which is a long string in memory and an rtf which is what i used for the um, the text pane uh, rich text allows me to easily manage the color of the repetitions. This is the whole project in, in my environment. It has only five classes and the two of them are for an attempt I did to make a, a web API with this. That attempt unfortunately didn't succeed because the API is good, but I could not produce a front end reasonable to get the same functionality that the desktop version has. Here is the document class, which I showed in the diagram before. The document pane which is the all the GUI is here, the graphic user interface. And this document pane it follows a very simple pattern that we use at work for building GUI. And it has a model inherited from composite pane and uh, some properties selected and during the GUI operation. The type repetitions, which is the contents of the table, the selected repetition, and the index in the navigation pane. It's very simple. And the um, uh, a key object I had to add, which is the repetition itself, it's mainly for the services that are shown in the columns of the table. It has a word indexes where it appears, a link back to the document, and uh, several inquiries. Well, uh, to close this part, I have a question open with this and I think almost any talk should should have this section of what happens with this work having tools like ChatGPT and another large language models in this particular case, it seems very relevant because I am working with the language. So, wouldn't language models be a better way to tackle this problem? Well, uh, let me start with another approach. This happens in every domain. You can do a quick search, but for any domain you can think of, you will find instantly a, a list of 10 or 15 artificial intelligence or large language model applications to succeed in, in that domain with the help of a robot. So uh, I have uh, some samples here. Artificial intelligence tools for teachers, for digital marketing, coding assistants, uh, copywriting tools, etc. Well, if you have used some coding assistant, you will know now that they are not solving most of your daily work. 
And I think the same happens in all these domains. We are suffering from an excess of hype about the AI and language models. And uh, really the replacement of people by robots seems to be a bit far away. Anyway, we have always two options. We can try to struggle with the artificial intelligence. That seems a bit pointless because as any new technology, it has no way to go back once we open that box. It is here and people will use it and there they will not stop using it. So we should better learn to take advantage of that technology and use the parts that we can and complement that with the parts we cannot. In the particular case of my tool, I did it, I tailored it to my way of work I don't know if anyone else would take advantage of this because it's uh, it's uh, made up for my needs at that moment. At some point, I thought expanding it by proposing synonyms for the word in in, in those contexts, but then uh, I realized that it was faster if I looked for the synonyms myself and uh, easiest than checking a list of proposals because uh, the corrections are usually very simple. I can make a small demo since we have a bit more time yet. This is the way to start it because it's a desktop application. I can open a document. I have a document open somewhere. Now I have it only This is a document in English that I wrote for for work. Uh, it has some pictures which are not analyzed, some formatting that is not analyzed. But in terms of the repetitions, I can open the text version of it. It is uh, very fast to analyze it b because it is short. And I have here the, the pane. I can sort by nearest. In this case, the column of sorting is the last one. And I can start checking the words. In this case, we have two repetitions but they are uh, one in the next line of the other, but they are not interesting. Same happens with this one because it they are the, the footers of the pictures. And here we have uh, the, the first relevant repetition. Now you can see that build appears several times and they are pretty near so this will be an indication to change the text i cannot change the text here this is not an edition pane i cannot write but uh, the idea is to work with the document aside and going in this case here and make the changes in in this document view Uh, well, I can use suffixes, for instance. They are 
a very small set of suffixes, but here you can see that the gerund ing appears pretty often uh, in the drilling world. Well, I think I think this is all. If you have any question, this is a small project, as I have said. Um, I see you you have uh, uh, looked for uh, repetitions of words and prefixes and suffixes. Have you considered looking? At, I have two questions: uh, repetitions of phrases, sequences of two or three words that may be repeated. They, it will happen less, but maybe you want to attack those too. No, I have considered that at, at the beginning, but if you have a sentence repeated, you have all the words of that sentence repeated. So analyzing the repetition of the first word, you will find the sentence. Make, make so sense. there was no need to make extensions for sentences. The the other question I want to ask: uh, um, Have you considered looking for repetitions of word stems? For example, yes. uh, you you looked for build, but maybe you would consider build as the same uh, word. It's the same stem word. actually. Yes, uh, I have considered that also at the beginning. And I, as usual, I decided to make the simple version first because uh, detecting stems is a whole area that I know a bit because I worked with that uh, long ago. And uh, I decided to start um, modest and uh, try words which are very easy to find. And if needed, I would go into stems, and it was never needed. It was enough with words and prefixes to cover the the lack of stems. And since you brought up the ChatGPT issue here, have you considered or tried, for example, uh, asking ChatGPT to detect the repetition of words or changing the text, removing those repetitions? Uh, yes. Uh, detecting the repetitions is not in a good uh, match for ChatGPT capabilities. It is usually bad at uh, requests like that or, or asking him to count words or tell me how many times this appears. Uh, it's awful at that. It uh, invents a lot of answers, which is actually his target is is built to uh, complete sentences. To in the case of questions, it tries to complete a pair of question answer with some answer that uh, has probabilities to. Mm -hmm. To make you happy with that answer, but uh, yes, we could ask him to rewrite pieces of text, and I don't do that because I review text as a hobby, as I said, mainly for a friend, and we. Uh, it is the process more than a deliverable uh, review. So uh, in viewing that, it makes no sense to ask uh, a robot to rewrite the text. Nor the author, nor the reviewer will enjoy that. And will not, worst of all, will not learn anything of it. Just and additionally, if I would ask ChatGPT to rewrite some part of the text, then I will have to review the original and the new text. So it's uh, doubling the workload. Hi, Carlos. Uh, great, yeah. great job. 
um, connected to what uh, commented Juan commented now would be great maybe interesting uh, having detecting words near near words that sound in from in, in a literally uh, word that sound is similar that's yes in, incorporating uh, phonetics to this would be, would be a better addition than stems from literary yeah. yes right uh, but it's also you know hard especially in uh no uh, as well in english as in spanish phonetics is very tricky working with yes. the text great word I noticed that you refer to ChatGPT as a hymn. Why? Because I was born in the 70s. For me, a robot is a hymn, except for Helen Oloy and other characters in science fiction. For me, it's him. Like God himself. I'm sorry, I'm a dinosaur. <laughs> a dinosaur working with robots. <laughs>